no idea how many people are. I didn't look. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to get started here in a couple of minutes. I'm super excited for you all to be here. Uh, if you can go ahead and drop in the chat if you can hear me okay. Um, and if you can see my slides, it should be fundraising event essentials, how to recruit and manage volunteers. Thank you, Devin. I appreciate that. I hope everyone is having a wonderful Thursday afternoon. Uh, it's a little chilly here in Florida. Um, it's much chillier than we're used to. We're used to that 100 to 110 range of, of weather. It's, I believe it's somewhere in the 70s today uh, with a slight wind chill. So we're we're all in our sweaters already. So, um, you know, drop in the chat. Let me know where you're joining in from. Love to hear um, how everyone's Thursday's going. <clears throat> we have a great webinar today. I'm really excited um, to dive into this. I hope everyone's having a great preparation for Giving Tuesday. If you are, oh, Montreal, Quebec, Canada, that's got to be, it's got to be cold up there. I hope everyone's having a great time uh, planning for Giving Tuesday. Um, if you are participating and if you are not participating, um, I hope that you have a great year in giving season and happy holidays to everyone. Thanks, everyone. Looks like we have a wide range of uh, individuals joining in. We have Michigan, Texas, Cincinnati, another floor, a couple of Floridas in there. Welcome, everyone. Canada, welcome. So excited to have everyone in here. Um, more Dallas, more Texas. I love it. Happy to see everyone. <clears throat> All right. Let's see, I probably have a couple of more people joining, but we are at two o'clock on the dot. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, I'm really excited for today's topic. Um, we're gonna be talking about fundraising event essentials, how to recruit and manage volunteers. So, um, so before we do get started here, I do have a couple of notes that I want to share with everyone. Uh, we are recording this session. Uh, and we will send a copy of today's webinar recording, as well as a copy of the slides after today's session. Uh, probably expect that tomorrow morning sometime. It's generally when uh, I'm able to get those follow-up emails out to you all. Please feel free to ask any questions that you have. So there, uh, the best way to put in your questions is that Q&A option that you see there. That makes it the easiest for us uh, to track all the questions that you have so we don't miss any, uh, any questions that you do have of myself or of my fellow pa panelists today um, about best practices or anything that we talk about with the QGIF platform. Use that chat box that you see there for any of that general discussion in the Q&A for any questions that you have. And if please share your highlights and key takeaways from today on your favorite social media channel, make sure to give us a follow on whatever channel you prefer. For those that are unfamiliar with QGIVE, we are an online fundraising platform. We have solutions for all size nonprofits, including year round fundraising tools, text giving, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, and auction tools. You are at the center of everything we do, and our goal is to make fundraising as easy as possible so you can raise more money online. If you are interested in learning more, please visit us at www.qgive.com. A little bit about myself. My name is Justin Cook, and I have been with QGIF for five years now. My five-year mark is in three days on November 5th, and time surely has flown by having a lot of fun here at QGIVE. And I've been a marketing professional for well over seven years now. Digital marketing and optimizing the user journey are my areas of expertise, which just means that I try to make your life as easy as possible when you're looking for fundraising resources or if you're learn trying to learn more about the QGIP platform online through our website. I also have three animals. I have one dog and two cats, and they are the reason why I exclusively present out of the QGIP office now. They love to crash all of my meetings and webinars. So what we're gonna be covering today is looking at how you can recruit, train, and retain your volunteers across all of your events that you have. 
with some great tips along the way for each. While we are talking about all of these best practices, think about how your organization can take these back and implement these strategies based on your unique needs and how your organization activates and utilizes volunteers. I know that you see retaining volunteers as the last step, but something that I really want to emphasize is that everything that we do will influence the retention process. We are looking to build the best experience possible to keep volunteers engaged. And through every interaction that we have with our volunteers, this contrib contributes to whether or not they're going to stay or go at the end of it all. So with this in mind, let's start with how to build the best experience for recruiting volunteers. Volunteers are a huge advantage to your nonprofit. They provide their time and they dedicate themselves to helping your nonprofit. And through them, you can accomplish a lot. However, if you do it wrong, Volunteer management can be a huge hassle for both your volunteers and your staff, which means that there's less people to help out, there's less money coming into your organization, and there's less of a focus on your mission. So to start with our volunteer recruitment, the first thing that we need to do is write down what type of volunteers that we need. Do you need a day of volunteers to help with things like check-in management or you know, distributing beverages on site at your event? Do you, are you looking for event committee members, those that are going to help you plan and coordinate every aspect of your event and help you actually put on your event, and looking for types of specialized volunteers. So these are types of individuals that have special skill sets, such as those in marketing or those that can help out with all of your technology needs. So once you identify what you need, you also need to write down how many of each type, because all of these different types of volunteers are going to influence where we look for volunteers and how we end up recruiting them and ultimately how we retain them. So as we start getting into the recruiting process, the best way to start building that pipeline of volunteers is looking around and finding out where they actually are. So as your nonprofit grows and you educate the community about your mission, you will naturally grow awareness for it, for your mission. And in turn, this will organically attract new volunteers and encourage them to get involved with you. But if you're a newer nonprofit or just need more volunteers in general, where do you find them? How do you get them? And I would love to hear you all as I go through this slide, if you want to drop in the chat, how you've successfully done this to recruit more volunteers uh, and where you've found them at. So a few ways that I suggest is first checking into your current donor base and any past volunteers that you have, whether that's through an event or if they volunteer in a different capacity. This group is obviously already very familiar with your organization and they have shown that they support you. So we are looking to engage this group to see if they want to have an even greater impact on your mission. Another avenue that you can go through is use a lot, utilizing established recruitment platforms. So there are a ton of different recruitment platforms out there where you can post your volunteer opportunities and spread the word and find potential volunteers for your organization. One of those examples is Volunteer Match. Uh, that's one that I would suggest. It's free to use, and all you need to do is claim your profile. Then you can start posting your volunteer opportunities, and that will help spread the word about what you have available. And there's some really cool features in Volunteer Match that will help pair you with the right volunteers as well. Another strategy that you can look into is building a referral network with other nonprofits. So there is a chance that not every volunteer is going to be a good fit for what you have to offer. Or you may find that a particular volunteer that has been working with you has a very large skill set. And that could be utilized by other organizations as well. So building a network with other nonprofits provides not only a way for you to recommend volunteers to other nonprofits, but it's also a good way to be recommended a volunteer as well. In that same vein, as you're working with other nonprofits, looking into local businesses to help recruit additional volunteers. So whether you're recruiting this, uh, these businesses to help sponsor, or if you're looking for that volunteer type of way, as you continue to spread your mission, things like hospitals, churches, and schools are great institutions that often have staff that want to help out. Additionally, attending networking events. So 
if you're looking for potential volunteers for any board positions that you have, or if you're recruiting for committee chairs or other event committee positions, network, networking events are a great place to start building those relationships. Getting involved in those various civics organizations and attending chamber events and so on, they can be a goldmine for high quality volunteers for your organization. So now that you've found where you're going to recruit volunteers, we're gonna start the process of spreading the word and getting them to engage with us. So at this point, we're looking to reach out to our volunteers and encourage them to get signed up. And the first thing that I can recommend when you do this is offering a wide variety of opportunities. So you will have some volunteers that can help out more often than others. So having various options for volunteers to get signed up will encourage them to find the best opportunity that fits them and their what they have available. So think about different volunteer opportunities like full-time, part-time, and those point-in-time, like the day of event volunteers that you have. Think about how you can get more volunteers, volunteer opportunities to encourage more to come. Second, sending out a call for volunteers is a great way to let everyone know that you're looking for volunteers. So for day of event volunteers and those specialized roles that we talked about, you can easily send out a social media post and uh, emails and text messages to recruit those volunteers. And ultimately what we're looking for is for them to also spread the word out to their networks as well. And we can really get a, a wide base of volunteers just from sending out that call. But additionally for your committee members, you wanna add that personal touch of giving these types of volunteers a phone call or even having an in-person conversation with them by grabbing a coffee. Ultimately, when you are sending out this type of call for volunteer, you wanna clearly explain your needs and how that volunteer participation is going to work. So you'll want to emphasize this, whether you're sending out that call for sponsors and social media and email, or if you are having more of those personal conversations. And additionally, you can do this not only through those mediums, but creating a web page or an event page or even a donation page, you can add what your volunteer opportunities are available at your organization to continue to expand on what is available and how it all works. And a pro tip here that I have for everyone is make sure that you do collaborate closely within your team and other departments. So you're not overlapping those communications and you're not accidentally sending conflicting messages to different volunteers. And something else that is very frustrating that you want to avoid is a difficult sign-up process. A confusing or extended sign-up process will end up turning away potential volunteers from getting involved with your mission. Remember, we are looking to create a great volunteer experience. So we want to do this from the very first step to improve those retention rates later on. One of the best ways to do this is something that I just mentioned is creating a website page or a custom page online to where you can dive into more details about what's available on those opportunities. And you can absolutely do this through QGIV if you are using us or through your fundraising tools. You can create a custom page and list out all of the different volunteer opportunities, which allows you to dive into additional information of, into that opportunity so that volunteers know exactly what they're going into. Additionally, you can also add a content widget to either your event pages that you have or other donation pages, as we mentioned earlier, to spread the word about what you have available. Something that you want to do when you are setting up your event registration forms or creating a dedicated volunteer form is adding custom fields so that you can collect that information about how volunteers wish to help out with your organization. And something that's really cool that you can do within the QGIF platform is actually add what we call conditional fields. So this allows you to gather additional information based on response from a, someone that's looking to sign up. So a great example is what you see here in this image where someone checked yes, that they do want, that they are interested in volunteering with our organization. And you can see that we have another field here that, that asks them how they want to volunteer for our market that we have set up. So this is a great way to add gather additional information from volunteers, but not clutter up your form with a ton of different fields. Because if you have someone that's coming to your donation form or event registration form, 
they don't want to see all of that those questions. And that's where conditional fields are very helpful. So that you can just ask them if they want to volunteer. And if they say no, none of those fields appear. Really cool and great feature to utilize if it is available. Additionally, you'll be able to gather the, their email address and their phone number for additional follow-up strictly from the form. And you'll be uh, able to identify what their communication preferences are. I always recommend both of these with whatever tools that you're using. With QGive, we help you collect that email address and that phone number, and you can add a custom field to identify what type of communication preferences they prefer, whether that's email, whether they want a personal phone call, what about text message, right? So uh, different types of ways in getting them to engage with your organization and integrate with your favorite CRM for additional volunteer management that you have. So once you do get volunteers signed up, it's now time to engage them to actually volunteer, right? Your fundraising tools should be able to help you out here. Because you collected all of that information on the front end with their forms, you'll be able to reach out based on the different preferences that they have. So your tools may vary in capabilities, but through your fundraising tools, you need the ability to create a list of volunteers and then be able to communicate directly with them. So with the QGIF platform, we have our text fundraising package in which you can actually do this. You can build out different volunteer lists to see who is interested in helping with your organization based on what type of volunteer opportunity they're looking for. So should you do this, you can actually build different types of lists for committee members, specialized volunteers, and those day of event volunteers as well. And then with these lists created, we can send out text messages to each group based on that interest. So we can personalize communications to our committee members, to our sponsor specialized volunteers, and our day of volunteers so that we can communicate as effectively as possible. And through those text messages, you can see here, we use personalization. And that is, through this is our personalization token in which that first name that we have coming through will dynamically change based on the contact that we're sending to. So here you can see in that, that I use my name, Justin, to generate into the, the message here. And something that you'll also see in that message as well, and you can utilize in your fundraising tools, whatever you use, that you want to definitely add a link back to wherever your event or website page is so that they can dive into more about those volunteer opportunities and understand what you are expecting of those that sign up. Now that you've recruited volunteers, it's time to take that next step and it's training. And to further optimize that volunteer experience that we're building, right? So we've got them to sign up. We've done the first step. We've provided an excellent experience so far. Now we got to make sure that we train them effectively so that they feel prepared for what to expect. And then during this phase, make sure to dive into why volunteers are interested in helping out. Are they there to make an impact or are they there just to get volunteer hours? That's an important step about what motivates your volunteers as this will guide our conversations that we have with these individuals, as well as we can come back to those within our retention efforts too. So with event volunteers, our main goal is to avoid uh, any confusion and reduce the amount of potential questions that are going to come through. So we want to anticipate those questions for our event. So what we want to do here is first start by offering a volunteer packet, provide detailed information about what your organization does, as well as adding in event goals and any timelines that they need to know about, about what needs to be done and by what time. This is especially helpful for your event committee members as they're gonna have a vast number of volunteer uh, tasks that they need to check off. Information on their duties and their role. The, again, going really back into your event committee members where this is incredibly important. This is also really important for your day of volunteers as well and specialized uh, volunteers that you have coming through so they know exactly what they need to be doing. Uh, I highly, highly encourage a list of staff members and what their duties are as well. We don't want our volunteers to be going to multiple people asking the same question over and over again because they are unsure of who has the answer. So make sure that you do provide that list and who they, who, what they do at your organization so volunteers know exactly who to go for. 
And finally, fundraising resources. No matter what capacity your volunteers are going to be utilized for your event specifically, fundraising resources help them get caught up on all the best practices. Your volunteers are not everyday fundraiser, uh, fundraisers, excuse me. And regardless of if they are experienced or they're new to the fundraising world, these resources will help them brush up on all the skills that they have. Next, I highly suggest holding a meeting to discuss what the roles look like. And this does depend on what type of role that you're recruiting for. So for volunteer committee members or specialized role, we need to take a more hands-on approach with these individuals so that we can have one-to-one -one meetings to go over what their role entails, what our expectation is, and what the position training looks like. With our general volunteers, so our day of, volunteers that we have coming, a, an all-hands meeting will suffice as this will be able to give us the avenue to discuss what our expectations are overall and then provide those volunteer packets that we created about their specific assigned job, assigned job duties that we have for them. And out of all of that, we will end up doing an event walkthrough at the end to give our volunteers that hands-on experience with what they're gonna be doing. This is important uh, to both address any of those questions that can come up, but it also provides any opportunity to run through scenarios that our volunteers will need to know how to handle them uh, when you're on site at the event. Depending on the role of your volunteers, they may be in a position in which you need to train them on how to create an event page or how to check someone in on site at your event or how to help them navigate a bidding app for a potential frustrated bidder, right? So it's important that we train our volunteers so that they can further help drive the event experience for those that are attending our event. And you can do this with your fundraising tools and with QGIF specifically, you can add volunteers to your fundraising tool so that they can help manage your events. And you can even edit their permissions so they only have access to what you need them to have access to. And no matter how your volunteers are involved with your organization, you, your staff, and your volunteers will have access to fundraising dashboards that help you visualize the goals that you have, as well as compare your performance year over year, over year to your events. Things like pre-built dashboards and the QGIV platform help you get set up very quickly with these types of fundraising data to see, but you can absolutely build custom dashboards and save them so you can see the data that you prefer. You'll also have access to uh, an extensive help desk and you can provide that access to your volunteers as long as you add them as a user into the QGIV platform. So it's not that the system is hard to use, but we know technology is not everyone's forte and they may need some assistance finding all the settings that they need. And that's why we've built out an extensive, extensive help desk with detailed articles on how to do things in the QGIF system. As long as your volunteers are added as volunteer, as users, as I said, they can access that help desk and quickly search and find whatever resources they need. But if you do have volunteers or staff that do like to talk to a real person, that is absolutely an option as well. With QGIV, you have access to unlimited support for no extra charge. And it's not just for your staff, it's also for your volunteers as well. Well, we're here to help you every step of the way, and anyone can call in or email and get a real person to help guide them through the platform. And additionally, if you remember about all of that training that we discussed previously, well, if you have limited staff or you just, like lots of other nonprofits, you just don't have the time to dedicate that level of training to your volunteers, then reach out. You have unlimited training for your volunteers in the QGIF system, and we're happy to guide them through all the tools that you want them to utilize. With volunteers that are helping to manage that on-site experience, 100% make sure that they are familiar with your fundraising tools that you're going to use. As we mentioned before, make sure to train your volunteers on whatever event ma management platform that you are utilizing. And a special tip here is make sure that you do cross-train volunteers into other parts of the system as well, because we all know that everything doesn't work well always on site in an event, and you may need a volunteer to jump in at the check-in line or at the beverage table if things are getting backed up. So within the QGIF platform, 
you will have access to a virtual terminal, which can be uh, accessed through a laptop device, or you can even download an event management app that we call Mobile Virtual Terminal. These tools make it super easy for your team to check in, manage attendees, and accept payments on site at your event. And you can see a little bit of that here. This is a view of one of our auction um, events within our mobile virtual terminal in which you can quickly search for those registrants, get them checked in and verify all of their information for the auction itself. And you can provide the, the access to all of these tools to your volunteers so that they can help with your on-site needs. This is a great way to drive up event revenue, especially if you're allowing volunteers to accept donations, any last minute registrations or on-site purchases. Through both of the virtual terminals, you can accept credit card payments, either entering that information manually or using a card reader. So all you have to do is swipe it and it'll get back into the virtual terminal. And if you are accepting any on-site donations of cash or check, they can enter these directly into your tools as well. And side note that this helps a ton on event management later on. When you're ready to send out any post-event receipts or thank yous to attendees, you'll have all of this information collected on that attendee profile. So when you do send out that thank you, you can properly thank them for everything that they did on-site at your event. And if you are running an auction, like I said earlier, make sure you do train your volunteers on managing bids so that they can easily discuss this with bidders. With the QGIP platform, bidders can manage their auction experience in several ways. So they can do this online through our auction website, uh, through a bidding app that we call Givy, or your staff and volunteers can actually place bids on behalf of your bidders through this mobile virtual terminal that you see. And if you're looking to up your event experience for a VIP, for example, this is a great way. If you have a dedicated volunteer that can follow around a VIP and place bids on their behalf, it is a great way to make a you know, provide an additional experience at that event. And then one final thing before we move on to retention. If your organization is using dedicated volunteers for your event committee, the tips that we provided earlier will absolutely help you find and recruit quality volunteers and train them as well. But there are some special considerations that you need to make with this group. I highly recommend that you plan well in advance of your event, especially if you have a large, a very a large volunteer force that is making up that event committee. They need time to plan and coordinate and get everything together as a committee. So you definitely want to make sure that you plan out well in advance with this group. This team is here to help with all aspects of your event planning, but they will most likely need some help getting up to speed with how your organization does things and how to effectively communicate your mission. I won't dive into all of the aspects here, but I will include a link to an additional resource later on with more information that you can download and look at. And then here we are. The grand finale, retaining our volunteers. If you've optimized the experience along the way, then this part of the conversation should be relatively easy. Your volunteers have had a great experience interacting with your organization, so now it's time to thank them, get their feedback on the experience that they had, and then build those deeper relationships. This is a when we're sending out our volunteer retention efforts, we're going to want to show as much appreciation as possible for what they just did for us. They dedicated their time and everything that they have with them to help you put on a great event. So some ways that we can show that appreciation is first providing a conclusion to your event. I don't know about you. I don't like to stop reading a book halfway through. And I absolutely dislike when a book ends on a cliffhanger. I like to have a great wrap up to it. And so providing a conclusion to your event will show your volunteers how much you raised, as well as how that money is going to make a greater impact for your organization. During that wrap up, celebrate your volunteers. And you can do this in several forms of different communication, whether you do that through email, a handwritten letter, or you're gonna give them a personal phone call. And something that I highly recommend on this side is to do a video thank you. The video thank yous really, really capture those emotions and they garner much more attention. If you do a video, they don't need to be long and they don't need to be of relatively high quality. The point is to thank your volunteers for their time and dedication to your mission. 
And it's a great way to share on social media as well. You can shout out your volunteers on social media with those types of uh, video thank yous if they like it, if they want to, or you can just give a general shout out uh, through a social media post as well. And another thing to think through here is how are you recognizing your volunteers through your donor rec recognition programs? We recognize our donors for the gifts that they give, but what about their time and their talent that they've dedicated to your organization? One thing that you can do on this side is host a volunteer appreciation event. You can gather all of your volunteers together to honor and recognize their events in a fun way. And a, it's a great way to show your volunteers how much you appreciate them. Not only does this allow your organization to keep volunteers engaged, it also brings together your volunteers to meet one another. And that can strengthen their relationships, not only with themselves, but also with your organization. This is also a very great opportunity to hand out special awards or small gifts to your volunteers. Make sure that you do recognize longtime volunteers as well as any new volunteers that you got through the year. So some ideas that you can do on this side would be to give out an award for volunteer of the year, as well as a rookie volunteer of the year award as well. And finally, one of the most important pieces that you're gonna that you're gonna want to do is ask for feedback on the event. How did they feel the event went? How was the sign up process and training? Did they feel supported? Did they feel like they could effectively perform their duties? And so on and so forth. There are bound to be good responses and there are bound to be bad responses. But what you're looking for are things that you know are in your control that you can improve and continue to create that best experience possible for future volunteers. And depending on what type of fundraising tools that you utilize, they can help you a ton on the volunteer retention side throughout the volunteer experience. So the, with QGive, you can actually do this by creating customized thank you emails. And you can even add conditional content for volunteers based on what they signed up for or if they used a specific volunteer sign up form. These emails will also include that personalization token that we talked about earlier so that you can address your volunteers by first name. Another thing that I highly recommend is customizing your confirmation pages, because this is a great area to add additional impact statements, impact images, any videos, and you can even add social sharing to those as well. So in case that your volunteers are really excited that they're volunteering for your organization, they can quickly share that with their friends and family, which also spreads the awareness about your organization and volunteer opportunities that you have. And you remember all of that information that we collected up front, we can now utilize that in our follow-up communications that we have. We can personalize the experience based on what their preference is, as well as what they are, uh, what their name is as well. So think through how you can send a thank you through your favorite email tools, send handwritten notes, thanking them for their help and think and add a thank you gift to that. You can send it to their home address since we collected that. If you're using text fundraising tools, you can send a personalized communication to them through text messages if that's their preferred choice of communication. And as always, a, a thank you call to thank them personally about their uh, dedication to your organization is always a great way. And then you can integrate all of this with your favorite CRM to keep track of all of the activity that you're having with volunteers and keeping conversations that you have across your nonprofit in one place for added layer of personalization and relationship building. So I know that I talked about earlier about some additional information about how to manage and recruit your volunteers, especially your event committee members. And we know that hosting nonprofit fundraising events is a lot of work. And oftentimes it can feel like herding cats, but it can also be a lot of fun. This is all dependent on the tools you're using, how you prepare, and how you recruit the right people to help your organization. You can download this ultimate guide that you see here to help you become a master of ceremonies with helpful advice on how to host more successful fundraising events for your nonprofit organization, as well as common pitfalls to avoid. You can scan this QR code now to download the resource, but I also included a link in the slides so that you can grab them when I send a copy of the slides tomorrow. Okay, so we're about to go into Q&A, but before I do, I wanted to cover a couple of things. We talked a lot about QGIVs event fundraising tools and how they can help you with volunteer management, but at a high level, 
I want to talk about how no matter what type of event you're looking to run, we can help you every step of the way. You can accept registrations online and create beautifully branded landing pages through our event registration tools that we have. You can even empower your donors to raise funds on your behalf with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And if you're looking to run an auction, you can absolutely do that with QGIVS auction platform with a bidding app. And on-site management, you saw a preview of all the things that you can do through the virtual terminal earlier. And you can also accept credit card purchases quickly with card readers. But additionally, you can create a virtual layout of your table and seating so that you can optimize your flow of the event, as well as seat any uh, registrants that signed up together, such as uh, a couple, or if you have sponsors that bought multiple tickets, you can put all of the sponsor attendees together at one table. And if you're looking to engage more attendees on site, at your event, you can use utilize text fundraising to accept pledges, and you can even send out event updates so everyone is aware of upcoming major points in your event. Okay, we're about to jump into Q&A, but if you are a QGIF customer, feel free to email us at support at QGIF.com. We're more than happy to talk through all of the tools that we discussed today and to guide you through with any questions that you have. If you're interesting, interested in using QGIF, please request a demo through qgive.com slash demo request. One of our sales members would be happy to show you all of the tools that we looked at today. And if you have any more questions on fundraising best practices or volunteer management, you can feel free to visit qgive.com slash blog to learn more. So now I'm going to ask my fellow colleagues to jump on to answer any questions that you have. I'm joined by Brittany Bedford, who is a customer success manager here at QGIVE, and she has been with us for over eight years. So welcome, Brittany. And I'm also joined by Caitlin Lipham. Caitlin spent seven years in the nonprofit industry as a fundraiser and a senior development manager. So I'm going to have them come on screen now. Hey, everyone. Okay. Hey there. Hi. Hi. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to drop them into that Q&A and be happy to get them answered now. There were a couple in the chat um, okay. earlier. Um, so one question, so Brittany went ahead and answered this for Jane and Liz, but they just wanted to um, verify that we said the QGIF platform um, can be used to register volunteers. Um, so Brittany said that, yes, our clients definitely use our registration forms for volunteer sign up. And with our new event design we launched this past spring, there's a ton of flexibility to use with the registration forms and, you know, all the use cases you could imagine there. And then Teresa asked if we were recording this webinar and yep. we, we are. Um, so you'll get um, like what Justin shared, you'll get the slide deck, the recording and some additional resources. And then Jane asked, does it have to be tied to a specific event? Um, I can take this one. So no. So think about instead of, I know that we have um, in QGIV our terminology, our forms and events. So just think about that event portion as just a registration or sign up form. So the event would be the actual volunteer sign up. It wouldn't actually be tied to any specific event that someone would be attending. Arnett. Um, I am a QGIF customer. Is the customized emails an extra cost? And I'm going to say no. Right, Brittany? Customized emails. Oh, customized emails. The customized right. thank you, like receipts that you send Oh, out. yeah. No, that's going to be, that's a part of the yes. platform and no additional cost. Yeah. That's included in our um, $0 a month uh, starter package. So you can customize any of the thank you receipts that you send out. Yeah, and Could this... tons of information on the help desk too, or mm -hmm. if you want to email um, our, our amazing um, customer experience team, they can help you with that too. Absolutely. Jane, we'll be happy to help you out. Um, Teresa, I see your question on, could this be an ongoing sign-in? Can you explain a little bit more about what you're asking there? Or Brittany, do if you already know what she's referring well, to? How I'm reading it is if it's something where volunteers can continue to sign into, um, so there's not going to be like a sign in portion. It's going to be like signing up for something. So you could definitely use the same volunteer sign up, um, form 
for like you could add what we call packages um, if you're familiar with our event forms. So you could create a package for each um, volunteer opportunity that they're signing up for. Uh, you know, if you are familiar, we have our clone feature so you could easily um, create or clone a new volunteer sign up form. So if you didn't want to use the same one, you want to do separate ones for each maybe event that they're signing up for. Um, or service that they're signing up for. Uh, there's a couple different options there. Allow for tracking for volunteer hours. <clears throat> so we're not, <laughs> I was gonna say, similar to like we're not donor management, we're not truly volunteer management. We are just the online platform using to get that information. Um, so while you could track how many um, services or events that your volunteers have signed up for, uh, there's not a way to actually track hours specifically. Right. Uh, we do have a lot of integrations, especially if you're using like Virtuous example for a CRM. I know that they have more volunteer management capabilities um, and we integrate with a lot of them. Yes. We, that's what our, we're, we're there to help with that recruitment side. We can help a bit with the, uh, the management side, like I was talking about earlier with building out different uh, lit donor lit volunteer lists through the text fundraising platform. We can help uh, you communicate through there, but you definitely want to have uh, a volunteer management to get that extra layer of personalization, as I was talking about and tracking all of that activity in one place. Any other questions? Did we answer? These are great questions. There was one from Jane. I apologies if maybe we addressed oh. a little bit of this. So she said, thank you. I am a QGIF customer. I will call uh, support in a few minutes uh, to walk me through this because we need volunteers for specific roles. So not really a question, more of a comment. But yeah. Thank you, Jane. We look forward to hearing from you. Yep. All right. I appreciate everyone hopping on today. I hope you take away something great. We'll have a, uh, a post-webinar survey. If you stick around, it will should pop up automatically in your browser. Oh, we do have one more. Do you partner with a CRM or VM that the forms you collect info on integrate well with? CRM or volunteer management, the forms you collect info on integrate well with. We Yes, we do. We um we have a couple of different partners that can help you with this side of things. I can't speak directly to all of the volunteer management features that they have, but if you check out uh, our website, qgive.com slash uh, partners, you can see on there all of the integrations that we have. Um, a few that come to mind specifically are uh, Donor Perfect, Bloomerang, and Virtuous. All three of those I know are the CRM. And they, they do have additional capabilities on that side to help you manage um, donors, volunteers, and all of that. Uh, Arnett also asked, do you have after event survey forms for attendees? Brittany, have you ran into that in your experience? Um, no, we don't offer survey forms in QGIVE. Um, we do have, I've worked with a couple of different clients who um, use our forms to take in the volunteer like signups and recruitment. Um, they use it for when they're actually on site, checking those people in. So they know which volunteers actually showed up and then they use our integrations with, um, I'm thinking of our email services off the top of my head, like MailChimp or something like that. And they funnel in who actually checked in to a certain list. And then they send out a survey that way, but it's not technically done in QGIVE. There are a ton of different, excuse me. You could My probably use yeah. an event form to set mm -hmm. up a certain type of survey. It would definitely be a workaround and it's not a native survey form, but it's right. probably possible. There And there's a ton of different places out there. Like Typeform is a great one. Um, they have a free plan as well for anyone that's looking to utilize it. So definitely an option for you. Okay, I'm gonna wrap it up. We're getting we're getting close to time here. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm so excited. I hope you all take away a great learning experience from today. Expect the follow up email from me with the recorded session as well as a copy of the slides uh, early tomorrow, uh, either morning or afternoon. Thanks, everyone, and happy fundraising. <laughs>